<laughs> Eric Ten Hag, I swear to God, he's probably going to be more excited than most Manchester United fans at the fact that Anthony is joining. But I am excited to be doing this video. I'm excited to be able to do a scouting report on Anthony, on taking a look at the skills, the strengths, the assets, the things that he's going to have to improve at Manchester United. But we've signed a potentially world class star, the sort of signing that comes to Manchester United as a burgeoning talent, real quality. He's already shown some star qualities, but can he take it up to the next level? That's what we're going to see under Eric Ten Hag. In this video, I'm going to run through a full run through of his stats, his career to date, help you understand a bit more about Anthony and the signing that we have made. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well. But let's run through this and let's take a look at Anthony and a full scouting report. And one thing to say here straight away, Anthony has one position and one position only. If you take a look at his career stats to date, you can see on the right-hand side there, he's had 100 appearances as a right winger and only 11 appearances in any other position. If you take a look at his heat map from the Eredivisie last season, it's almost like he's got magnets in his shoes and they're just magnetized to the right flank. Anthony is a pure out-and-out specialist on the right wing and he's left-footed. And for Eric Ten Hag, we've seen the sort of obsession, not a, uh, kind of an obsession that he's had there with Lissandro Martinez and bringing in that left-footed centre-back. Bringing in Anthony as a right winger who's left-footed is a similar sort of obsession, I would call it, because it adds a new element of unpredictability to Manchester United attack in the same way, that, uh, in, uh, not the same way, but in, in, a, in a similar sort of way as to how Lissandro Martinez helps us build out from the back by being a natural left-footer. And therefore, the body positioning that he receives and, and the passes he can make, they're different. And with Anthony on the right wing, it will be different. A massively different type of profile of signing of, uh, of, of any attacker that we've got. Completely different to Rashford, to uh, Martial, to Anthony Alanga. The, the closest we would have is Jadon Sancho. But Jadon Sancho, again, he's a bit of a different profile of player. But Anthony, when you take one look at his stats, what he's good at, I mean, if you're looking at his overall output, and I will run into that, there's definite room for improvement. When you take a look at his scouting report on FB Ref compared to every other attacker or winger last season, you can see just how good he is. He's, he's in the top one percentile for shots per game, assists per game, top fourth percentile for expected assists. Look at that. Progressive passes, top 10%, top Second percentile for progressive carries. He is a dribbler. He is a person who wants the ball at his feet. Touches in the attacking penalty area. 92nd percentile. Progressive passes received. The top one percentile. And interestingly down there, interceptions. Top second percentile. So he's somebody who will harry and attack the ball. I'm really excited about this signing. I really genuinely am. What I want to do now is show you a bit of application of these stats. Because it's all good and well looking at these numbers. Well, you know, what does that actually mean, Sam? So I'm going to run through the skills and the strengths and sort of bring up some examples. Big up to George for helping with the research on this one. With these annotated uh, pictures, taking a look at different aspects of his game. Starting with the shots, as I said, there's a, a situation here for Ajax. He's on the edge of the box. Boom. Goal. Now, uh, there's going to be, I imagine, Iron Robin comparisons. Uh, and the idea that you can get that player there who cuts in from the right-hand side onto his left foot to the edge of the box and fires in a left-footed shot. Anthony loves doing that. And as I said, one look at his uh, stats, one look at the fact that he, per game, has over four shots and is in the top one percentile. He loves to get into this scenario and he loves to score goals. Now, no doubt that his output needs to improve, right? This is his overall career stats and in 119 appearances, both for Sao Paulo and for Ajax. He's got 28 goals and 28 assists. So he needs to improve in that. And Eric Ten Hag clearly backs him to improve in that. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone out so hard to make Manchester United sign him. And as I said there, the output is there in terms of the shots he's taking and the positions he's getting himself into. But he's going to have to improve that overall output of results at Manchester United. But I suppose the thing... There's, there's, honestly, there's so many different facets to his game that you could get more excited about. And this is clearly one of them. Because 
One thing we saw against Southampton, one thing we've seen so often as Manchester United team was a lack of creativity up front. Anthony Cummins sort of explodes that completely. And here's quite a few different examples of that. In this situation here, you can see Anthony's got two options there in front of him. You can just pass it inside, an easy pass. You can go for the little dink across towards the edge of the six-yard box. Instead, he takes his man on, cuts to the edge of the box, creates a, a shot. A, a, sorry, creates a shot for himself. Another situation here. He's got, not really surrounded, but he's got three defenders in front of him. Two kind of easy passes that he could take on. Sort of pass the responsibility to someone else. Instead, he takes his man on and creates all of that space to run in behind. Another example here, four defenders around him. He squares up. I mean, it's, it, it, you can see the two balls that he could take on, but instead, no, I'll just take my man on and create all that space in behind that I can run into. Anthony is not somebody who will shirk the responsibility of the ball. He'll not, he's not somebody who's going to shirk the responsibility of creativity. Now, I imagine it's going to be a little bit like Nanny, certainly at the start of his Manchester United career, because there's going to be frustration that from fans, in the stadiums, that his output doesn't necessarily lead to shot creating chances, but he is going to be somebody who takes that risk. Somebody who wants to create assists, wants to create shot scoring opportunities. And I don't think you can say that about too many of Manchester United's attackers who love to shirk responsibility, just wait for the easy overlap. That's all good and well, and it's a facet of the game, but Anthony is somebody who can make something happen on his own. And these are cracking examples as well of the flair that he's going to bring to the game, the skills that he's going to bring there. I think that's Haller in the middle, outside of the boot. Boom. Fantastic assist. The vi not only the, the vision to see that pass, look, I thread of the needle between those two defenders with the outside of his boot, but the confidence to actually take that on and fire the ball in. Here, another example. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five defenders in between him. And I'm getting that's Haller again, but he finds that ball. And again here, look, lots and lots of defenders around him. It's a tough situation, but he found the right ball to help the attack go further. One more example here. It's quite a simple ball there. Instead, Anthony decides to know, I'm going to go for that ball. Creates a better goal scoring opportunity. And he has the confidence to take that pass on. It's the confidence that I want to see at Old Trafford. Anthony is going to be that player. I've said it quite a few times in the live streams. He's going to be the player that gets you shuffling towards the front of your seat in Old Trafford. He's the man who's going to take the responsibility on to try and create those chances. I'll go back to a few of these there that I just ran through here. This situation in particular, the easiest and safest option would have been to pass to one of his teammates, but instead he dribbles past his man. That's what I mean. And we go back to this situation here. Look, progressive carries. There is only, he's in the top two percentile for dribbling. He loves to take his man on. Get the ball, skip past him. Get the ball, skip past him. That's probably the biggest facet to his game that is going to certainly improve Manchester United's attack and bring a massive element of unpredictability to it. Um, and I'll tell you what, I can't wait to see what he does in the United shirt. I really, really cannot. Because it's obvious where he's going to line up, man. He is going to make that right wing his own. He's going to have the ability, if he receives the ball in this situation, I don't know, he's squared up against the defender here. It's not just going to be a case that Anthony is going to pass to someone else, pass to, Mark, pass to whoever's around him. He's going to try and skip past that player with the ball and then get into this situation sometimes. Create that chance for whoever's in the box to get in the box or he's going to take it on himself. He's going to skip past, go to the edge of the box and create a goal scoring shot for himself. Anthony is somebody who Eric Ten Hag, look, as I said, I'm going to go back and play this video at the start. It's kind of a joke, but it's not a joke. Look, Eric Ten Hag doing keepy uppies with Eric, with Anthony, and he's a player who he, he has pushed to sign for Manchester United. Anthony really has done everything within his own power to make sure this move happens. Eric Ten Hag has done everything within his power to make sure Manchester United stump up the cash to make it happen. Is it overpriced? Yes, it's massively overpriced. Could he be the perfect signing for Eric Ten Hag? Yes, he could. One last look at his stats here, and it's it's obvious to see that it's the profile of an Eric Ten Hag signing. That interceptions being in the top two percentile means that he can aggressively press from the front when we need him to. And that movement, that energy, we need mobile, dynamic attackers. But look, the progressive carries being in the top two percentile 
Progressive passes received. Shots in total. Assists. Anthony is a Brazilian star in the making. He already is a star. Can he sort of supersede Rafinha, I suppose? I don't know whether he starts for the Brazilian national team. But that's going to be his aim now. Between now and the World Cup. To have a stunning start to the season and force himself into contention to start for Ajax, for, to start for Brazil at the World Cup. But I think you should really be excited about this signing. Ajax fans who have all spoken to me, they said, look, man, if he can find that consistency, you've got a top class star in his hands. United fans are going to have to be patient. The shot output is there. His goals and assists, I'm sure, will come in time. And, and it's going to be up to Anthony to build on the, the, the growth that he's had at Ajax and to go up to a new level at Manchester United because it's going to be required. And if it happens, oy, 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 he's going to be a cracking signing. Look, let me know what you think in the comments below. Hopefully this video has helped you understand a bit more of a profile of Anthony's game. And if it has, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. But I don't think we'll see him against Leicester, but against Arsenal. Bring it on, man. Bring it on.